Hey MDP, that's me, and welcome to a Sims 4 to Sims 2 clothing tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to cover how to take a Sims 4 mesh and go to Sims 2. Now, to do that, we do have to go into Sims 3 stuff and then into Sims 2. Now, this tutorial is for people who already know how to use Milkshape, who already know how to use SimPE, and who already know how to extract things. Now, if you want help in beginner level stuff, I will link things to you. Um, I will show you, for instance, that I started off using this 3 to 2 clothing conversion tutorial by Rented Space or Serenity Fall. And I'm going to use the same aspects. And she gives very descriptive, you know, coverage and how and why for everything here in this tutorial. And I'm going to link this. This is a Dream With um, link. And I'm just going to link you to it if you want to know basics the why, the how, and the what of why I'm doing what I'm doing. But I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial. This is pretty much a show and tell of how I go from one game to the other game. Now this tutorial can be used for um, other games as well, like if you download a model off of um, TF3DM or other alike, DeviantArt, um, you download those models and you want to say put them in Sims 2 or even Sims 3 you use the same tutorial it's the same motions to go from one game to the other but we're going to start here in Sims 2 body shop we're gonna to go to create parts we're gonna start a new we're gonna to go to create clothing and I think I'm gonna do a male shirt today and we're just gonna take our nearest custom one and we're going to export it. We're going to give it a name. I'm going to call this AM Top. We're just going to import it right back into the game. And then we are going to exit. Let that unload. Now, here is Sims 4 Studio. Now, to you'll have to this is the easiest program I have found to export your meshes from The Sims 4. There are other ways, but they are so time consuming and tedious that I just, I can't do those ways. So why, why, why do those ways? Do the easiest way for you. So The Sims 4 Studio, I'll link the, I'll link it in the description below. And you have to be a member at their um, site to download their Sims Studio. But um, it's worth it. Hey, you get if you have Sims 4 and you want to go from that game to this, you know, Sims 3 or Sims 2, why not, you know? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to CAS, we're going to do a 3D mesh, we're going to click the CAS button, and I've already loaded it, that way we don't have to spend time with all the loading. And what we're going to do here is find the one that I want to do. Uh, let's do this one. And let us select all the colors. All I did was press it. Well, let me unselect everything. All I did was press one, hit shift on my keyboard, and press the last one. So it selects all of them. We're going to hit next. It's going to be loading. Alright, and then we are going to go. And I've already created a folder for it. Now it's asking you to make a package for The Sims 4. And all I do is call this the dummy file because we're not going to actually put anything back into Sims 4. And it's going to load. It's going to show you what it looks like. And we're going to export the textures first because we're going to need those. So I'm calling this black. And it'll tell you the actual names of all the colors. Um, sometimes EA calls them weird names, so I'm just like, uh, blue is blue. We don't need a weird name. Okay, so we have all of our textures explored. We can now go to meshes. And it's usually the LOD0 is the mesh that we want. So we're going to export. And now if you go into Blender and it's only a partial, you go back here into Sims 4 Studio and you just export another number and see if it's the correct one. We are going to call this the Sims 4 mesh. It is going to, oh, it is going to export it in a Blender file. And I will... Link in the description below to every single one of these programs I'm using. That way it's easy for everybody. 
So it's going to save all of your stuff in your folder, and it's going to pop up every time you save something. You know, that's all right. Just click off of it. Um, but the wonderful thing about that is now you got your mesh exported, and your window is already open to your folder where everything is saved, and you just double-click on that Blender file there, and it's going to open it up. This is what Blender looks like. To those who have never used Blender, I am not an expert in it. I know this much about it, and then that is to select things and to export it out. Um, I've never done much in it, so if you want to know what all this stuff is, I would Google tutorials about Blender. Um, Sims 4 Studio does have some up on their set, of course, because all Sims 4 stuff is basically done in Blender. Um, there is, of course, I'm going to show you how to export it and put it into Milkshake. But, um, so everything's going to be exported from Blender. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go over here, and you see where it says Rig. That is this skeleton here. Um, it's the four, Sims 4 um, body. And then underneath it is Sims 4 Studio Mesh 1, 2, 3, 4. This is your mesh. And how you know that is you just click this eyeball here, and you see where it is. What is it? All right. So what we're going to do on this inverted triangle, we're going to click them. We're going to hit Shift on the keyboard, and we're going to select all of them. And that way we are selecting just our shirt here. We're not selecting this body because we don't want it. We don't want extra stuff when we go into Milkshape. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to File, Export, and we're going to go to Wavefront Object. We are going to go over here on our left of our sideboard. We're going to hit our Selection Only. We're going to go Smooth Groups, and we're going to Write Normals. Now hitting that Write Normals is very important. Me and Tombstone of Life and Death were talking about it once, and when they were trying to do Sims 4 conversions. They couldn't get them to do right because the normals would not write correctly. And so that's very important to hit that write normals. Now we're just going to keep it the same name. We're going to export it. All right. And we're going to exit out of this because we're not going to need that. We are going to load Milkshape. I already have it loaded. We are going to go to File, Import, Wavefront Object. We're going to go find our folder. We call it EP1 Sweater Hoodie Henley. And we are going to go to Sims 4 Mesh Object, and it's going to load it. And this is what it looks like. Now, it's all in, it's all kind of rigid looking because it came from Milkshape. Now, to correct that, all you do is go to Face and go to Smooth All. And look, it's all smooth. We will fix where you can kind of see it's kind of splotchy here. We're going to fix that. Don't worry. We're going to go to Groups. We're going to rename this to Group underscore base and rename and now we're going to export it and we're going to export it as a TSRW object and we're going to call this the Sims 4 mesh to modify all right we're going to exit out of that. We're not going to need that. We are going to go into, let's see here. We're going to need a Sims 3 mesh. Let's see. Let's pick a mesh. I think I'm going to pick the double knit sweater. We're going to open our Sims 3 PE. We're going to find our folder. We are, oh, oh, no, we're not going to find our folder. We are going to go find that Sims 3 mesh first. Fifth Avenue set. What did I say? The double knit sweater. I'm going to open it. All right. And where you see on this list it says the uh, GEOM, we are going to click on each and every one of these to see if we can find where it says shader. This says none. That's probably a morph. Sims 3 PE is pretty slow, but it is the best way to extract Sims 3 stuff. Now, you saw that I had folders with um, Sims 3 stuff already, um, files and stuff. I will link you to where those can be found if you don't have Sims 3. I do own the Sims 3 base game, but I do not have it installed. All right, we find one that says Sim Skin. You see that? where it says shader and then sim skin that means that is a probable mesh so we're going to go to export to file we are going to find our folder 
and we are just going to save it. And we're going to continue down because there can be multiple of them. See, that one says Simskin, so that is also a probable one. Export to file, just to save. That's a none. I'm just going to continue to make sure we get all of them. That says Simskin, export to file, save. Usually there are three, but sometimes there can be four. That one says none. All right, minimize that because we may or may not need to go back in and use it. Sometimes, most of the time, not, but it's Sims 3 PE is... Might as well keep it up. Alright, now, how you decide which one of these to use. You want the one that has the most kilobytes, because it's the biggest one, so it's usually the most complete mesh. You say okay to that. Now, this is the reason why we need this. You notice how the arms are. And the reason is because we need the Sims 3 skeleton for our Sims 4 mesh, because our Sims 4 mesh was exported as a wavefront object, so therefore it has no skeleton. All we're going to do with this is go to group, rename it group underscore base, and we are going to export it the same way we did our Sims 4 mesh as a TSRW object. And we're going to call this the Sims 3 reference. We are going to, no, we're not going to exit out. We're just going to minimize that. We are going to open up our mesh toolkit and I will leave that of course is you can see it's in a folder here it's not a, it doesn't have an actual icon you just open up that folder and then you open up that icon you can make a um, shortcut if you want to I just don't for some reason just doesn't alright we're gonna go to auto tools for WSO the first one we're going to select is going to be our Sims 4 mesh to modify because that is the one we are mesh to modify and our reference mesh, this is why we named them this way, is our Sims 3 reference. We are going to make sure we replace all bone assignments. We're going to make sure the um, this is checkmarked. And we're going to do assignments and save. We're going to name this our Sims 3 baby file. We are going to go back in the milkshake where we have our Sims 3 file just sitting and waiting. We're going to go to import TSRW object, because that's what it saves it as, in our Sims 3 baby file. Because The Sims 4 and The Sims 3 made a baby, therefore we have a baby. We are going to go to the first group base, which is our Sims 3, and we're going to delete it. We're going to leave our Sims 4 here. We are going to go to Joints. We are going to go all the way up to where it's the B root bind. That is the, um, the complete skeleton mesh for The Sims 3. We are going to rename it something, anything you want to name it. I'm going to call it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, just because I can. And we're going to hit Rename. And I'm going to go to File. I'm going to Export, if it'll let me. I'm going to go all the way up this list. I'm going to go to half Light SMD. I'm going to call this Sims 3 Mesh, because it is now going to be Sims 3. Now, make sure you tick that with Vertex Weights, because we do need that. That is very important. Now, if you don't feel comfortable exiting out of Milkshake every time, just minimize it. That way you can go back to figure out where you messed up if you do indeed mess up. What we're going to do is we're going to import our Sims 3 mesh. We're going to hit OK on that. We don't need to do anything else. We all we have to go into File, Import, Half-Life, SMD. And we are now going to import our Sims 3 mesh SMD. And we are going to untick the rename bones. Very important. And we're going to wait for it to load up. Sometimes it can take a few minutes. Just let your computer do what it's doing. All right, so you can see here that there's a double in your in your milkshake files. You can see there's a lot of vertices there. So all we do is delete the Sims 3 mesh because we are not going to need it anymore. And now how you know you have the Sims 3 skeleton is you click it on. And there you go. You have the Sims 3 skeleton. What we're going to do is we're going to use that. We are going to go into our tools we are going to select our joints we're going to hit the N button down here the animation button therefore you see that all these go gray you cannot click on vertices you can only click on joints and how we do that is we go to select and we click the joints therefore we can now select if it will let me there we go and it turns green that's how you know it's selected we're going to go to rotate 
45 on our Z, and that's how you see there. And we're going to click off Z, and now we're going to be doing negative 6. You can see it's moving here. We are going to select again. We're going to go and hit our elbow joint, and we're going to go negative 3 on that one. Now, I haven't figured out the exact measurements yet of what Sims 4 skeleton to Sims 2 skeleton is. So this is pretty much just an approximate of um, getting the skeletons lined up. Alright, so we have our arms up, and I'm going to show you here in a second why we did that. Alright, now we're going to go back and rename this group base again, and we're going to go rename. Now we're going to go File, Export again, and you can see that we're going through the same motions we just did, the TSRW object. We're going to call this, now since this is now a Sims 3 mesh, we're calling this the Sims 3 Mesh to Modify. We export. I'm done with you. All right, we're going to go back into Milkshape. Going in and out of Milkshape, people are like, why do you have to do that? Well, you got to make sure you don't have the wrong skeleton with the file you're using. We are now going to go to Sims 2 Unimesh Import, and we are going to find our, a Sims 2 Mesh. Now, what I do is I just use the naked bodies, because why? Why do anything else? You hit no to that first one and yes to the second one. You can import meshes, but at this point, why? Don't do it you are morphs you don't do them right now you do them later when you have all of the um, the mesh converted to sims 2 and then you add morphs that way you don't have to make so many files all right so here is our sims 2 naked body and you see how the arms are horizontal like this this is why we had to move the arms this is why we had to convert it to sims 3 first that way the arms are matching up with the skeleton and then we can move them to where we need them alright so now we're going to go to group and we're going to rename this group underscore base and we're going to export it just like we did everything else we're going to go to TSRW object We're going to untick the rename bones because we want it to be called the SQL in the end. And we're going to wait for it to load. And you can see here on the vertate, there it goes. That's how you know. Now, we're not going to delete the body. We are just going to hide it. And that is how you get from Sims 4 to Sims 2 in Milkshape. This is from Sims 4 Studio all the way into Milkshape. So... Why did we export that in Body Shop first? No, I'll tell you why in a little bit when we get to when we're going to go back into Sims to Body Shop. Now, first, what we have to do here is we have to delete the Sims 4 skin. Now, what do I mean by skin? I mean anything that is nude, anything that, you know, is actual skin. Not necessarily the sim mesh. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select. And I'm probably not going to show like every detail of this. I'm probably just going to fast forward. That way you can see the progress as we're going. Um, but I'm going to show you basic things. Now the easy way to do this is put your wireframe wire up. And look to see where we are. Now we're going to start deleting vertices. Oh no MBT we're, we're deleting vertices why are we doing that well we don't need them we don't need them alright now no thankfully we don't have like the little part of the skin sometimes and I've noticed in Sims 4 meshes there's like little itty tiny ones here that you don't really notice at first but thankfully in this one we don't have that problem alright we're gonna go over here let's frame select and we're now gonna be deleting Same thing over here. Alright, now we're going to be doing our neck area. Now, if you're like, oh, I think I got them all, well, to make sure. What we do is, you know, all those, those, um, 
all those files that we exported, all those texture files, um, you open up your milkshake or whatever program you're using and you just let's select one. We make it into a bump map. We can now open it into here. Let's select all using control A. Make a new. Put our texture up here. And we can see, oh, we missed some. All right, so why why frame back on? Let's see. All right. Now we just have our mesh. Why did we delete all that stuff? Well, now we got to mesh it up, mesh it up, match it up, and mesh it up. Same thing with Sims 2 Skeleton. You know, when I was talking about the, the skeletons not matching up, well, this one isn't that bad. Sometimes you got to move them a little bit. So how we're going to do that is we're going to make it bigger. You know, what we're going to do first is we are going to take this off, and I'm going to just delete all this because we're not going to need it. That way I can see it a little bit better. All right, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select all again, and I'm just going to move it a tiny bit forward so that matches up better. It is not perfect, but it's not going to be perfect. Um, when it comes to um, the sleeves, sometimes the Sims 4 sleeves are a lot longer than the Sims 2 arms because the skeletons don't match up, or the, um, the body skeletons don't match up. So um, sometimes you have to make the sleeve shorter to fit. I think we're going to have to adjust a wee bit because this is the crease for the elbow here and this is the elbow for the Sims 2 mesh. So just a wee bit. Uh, let's see. Now you see where all this is? Not worried about that because we're just going to delete all this. All we need is the neck area and the clavicle area here. And then all we need is the arms. We can uh, make this longer if we need to. But I don't think so. I haven't ever had that problem with Sims 4 meshes because the torso for the Sims 4 mesh is very long. Longer than the Sims 2. Because you can see here, this is halfway in your torso and then you begin your your body here. We may have to make this a little bit wider here because the Sims 2 um, booty is pretty 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 round. So um, I, don't, I don't see that problem with girl meshes. Um, guy meshes I do so I guy uh, booties in the Sims 4 are flat and then in the Sims 2 we got a little curve. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start deleting the um, Sims 2 areas we don't need, and we are also going to make the sleeves just a wee bit shorter to match up with the elbow. Now, how we're going to do that, you're asking. Well, I will show you. Actually, just like that. I'm going to get a little bit more in. There we go. Now, this is going to be a lot of milkshape stuff. Now, if you're not familiar with milkshape, as I said, uh, those tutorials, you know, just doing something over and over again, you're going to learn how to do it. So, this, you know, practice makes perfect, they say. I am not someone who is perfect at all. I don't consider my, myself an expert. I am not an expert of milkshape or even blender, especially not blender, but... Um, what I could tell you is I am, have enough ability to show you how to do the basics on this. Alright, now I'm just going to see, while well, I keep clicking like this to see where the vertices are hitting. Okay, so I think I'm only going to need this much. I don't think I'm going to need the next. Why I selected those is we're going to find out here in a second. We're going to go to scale. We're only going to use the X. We're going to put 0.98. We're going to make this very small adjustments. Okay. I'm going to go
go back to select. Let me get rid of the here, and we're going to delete here to here. We start off small. We don't delete everything at once. You always start off small. That way you can see what you're doing while you're doing it. Okay. You see how that doesn't match up? That's okay. That's all right. We're going to make it match up. Okay, now we can start deleting the other part of the body. I think we will, because what we're going to do with these vertices is, I know that they're showing, like, all the way right here, where the um, Sims 4 mesh is, but we're, what we're going to do is have this attached to the skin, so you can't see. I think we're going to be alright with that. Okay. Now, if you don't want all this extra space, there is things you can do. You can do, uh, which I'm going to, uh, make new vertices. What I'm going to do, select these two, because I want to split right here. And I'm going to go to vertex, divide edge. And see, now we have a new one. And now what I'm going to do is snap together and weld together. You notice that it creates these triangles. So what we're going to do is this, and we're going to go to Caps Smooth. We're going to select this and this. Caps Smooth again. Alright, so now I don't need that one. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side too. We'll make sure that we're, we got it. sides being correct with each other, they are identical. Now you're like, oh, why don't you just do that with this? Well, I could. That's a lot of extra work we don't need. Let's put our body up here. And this is where it starts to get tricky, um, matching the vertices up, and I'm going to show how to do that. First, we're going to do the arms. We do our easiest first, because time time consuming as it is. Um, what we do need to do is expand our arms on the Sims 4 mesh just a wee bit to match up a little bit better with our Sims 2 skeleton. like your sleeves are connected. Nope, no they're not. <laughs> they're not connected. Now it's very important to connect the skin. You can see here a little bit it's, it's even deviated. You're going to see. It's going to be okay. It's all going to be alright. Alright. What we're going to do is we're going to pick sides. Since we're already on this side, we'll start here. Let us actually delete our bump up so I can see a little bit. Alright. Now, this is what I do. I cheat. I'll let you know. I cheat on this part because generally you want to use all these vertices. But I'm not going to use all these vertices because why? Now let's count how many we have. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine. Now let's get rid of you. Let's 
let's put you back. Now here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have two less vertices in our Sims 2 and our Sims 4. Well, what are we going to do about that, you want, you may ask? Well, we're going to see where we match up one. I can see that we have, well, we have four on top, five on bottom. And our Sims 2 has three on top, four on bottom. So what we're going to do is we are going to combine some of these. Uh, I'm just going to make sure which side need to be combined. All right. We're going to make sure that's selected. I'm selecting this side first. And I'm going to go to Snap Together. You can move these, you know, where you want them. I don't generally do that. Now I selected my body or my Sims 2 skin to see where the vertices are and where the Sims 4 is. Now what you can do is make this bigger so it sits around the Sims 2 skin better, but I'm not going to do that. What I am going to do is I'm going to move where you see body here, I'm going to move it down. That way the um, dominant is the Sims 4 mesh and not the Sims 2. And why is that? I'm going to show you. Gonna move out a little bit so I can see. Let me hide that. Let me see what is the top here. You are the top, so you are the inner. And I'm gonna select this. And we are going to go to Vertex. Sims 2 UDMS Vertex Data Merge. See that move? So it is now here where the Sims 4 is. See there. Now, if you ever mess up, you want to catch it very early because Milkshape only lets you go back so much. How you do that is Control Z or Edit Undo, because it does ev not every you know every combine and stuff. It does every action like it's showing that I just selected that group, so that's also an undo. That's why it's very important to catch it early on if you mess up. If not, you'll just have to start over. I have done it many a times, starting over from scratch. Good thing about having all your save files and stuff, all you would have to do is import your Sims 2 mesh and then your Sims 2, or your Sims 4 mesh over it with the SMD file. Okay, I'm just going to quickly do the rest of these and I will see you when I have this finished. are complete. Now we must do the harder part. This is tedious here. This takes a lot of focus. One, um, because you see all of the little dots here and when you get closer to your collarbone the, the more compressed all the dots become and it, and it makes it a little bit difficult to see what else you see, you see all this mess we have to zoom in like real close to see what all we got here we have to make a plan do you want to start in the front or you want to start in the back basically and I'm going to start in the back on this one and I'm going to put the body back on top because I want it to be dominant not sure if that's the right words to use dominant, but that's that's the ones I use. So we're matching vertices. Probably could combine these two to go to this one. I'm just I'm just doing an overview right now, looking where 
I'm probably going to have to do things because there's less vertices on The Sims 2 mesh than The Sims 4. And that's a judgment call. Basically, you say, hey, uh, there's two vertices here to one. You know, you don't have to do it that way. I do because I'd rather not make a vertice for every single vertice in The Sims 4 because there's a lot more. There is a lot more Sims 4 vertices than Sims 2. fix textures we got to fix the splotchiness you see that oh it's a different color we'll fix that we'll fix this darkness that's starting here and there's a spot here um, but we are actually going to export it first before we do that that way we can see what the all the problems are because um, I find it after I export it and then I load it in Bioshop that there's black spots that form sometimes. I'm not really sure what causes that. Um, I'm guessing just from, from being exported so much through Milkshape that it does that, but I, I'm not sure. I, I don't know what causes the black spots. Um, there is only one way to fix them and if they don't, if they don't, um, fix that way, then there's pretty much nothing you can do without deleting vertices and re-adding vertices, so, um, which I don't recommend. I have done that, and that sucks. So, what we're going to do, we are going to, one, we're going to save it as a milkshake file. We're just going to call this mesh, and then we are going to export it. I'm going to export it as a Sims 2 uni mesh. And I'm going to call this the MDP42. This is AM. I'm going to call this the Sweater Hoodie Henley. And I'm going to call it Mesh. I'm actually going to copy that later. Save. Alright, I'm going to minimize this. Minimize that too. Go back into Milkshape. Oh, back and forth, back and forth. Going to go to File, Import, Import our Mesh. All right. So I see, I see here. You see that? How it starts to have that shadow? That is not. It's not supposed to do that. See that side doesn't do it. That side does. All right. See, sometimes it corrects the problems for you. So I see that those are fixed. Now, if if they weren't fixed, let me go back to here and show you. If these, you see these lines, they're not supposed to be there, but they got fixed when they exported it. Um, if they don't, and, and which sometimes that does happen, all you need to do, you can still see them right here. We go in here. And we're going to do some guesswork where they are. We're going to go one more. We select all but the top and bottom. 
Now if we select the bottom and the top, it's going to create black spots, which we don't want on. All we do is go to Vertex, Cats, Normal Smooth, and it smooths those out. Let me do one more, show you just what to do. And those are smooth. You know, sometimes the top doesn't smooth out, but you know what, that's okay. This is going to be like a sweater look, so it kind of looks like it's grabbing. And you do the same thing here for this. Um, I don't really know which one that is. Are you you? You are you. Just grab, you know, how many it is. You could do all of these. You don't have to do the middle vertices, just the edge. It just, oops, I didn't mean to hit that. And just smooth them out. See? Smooth them out. And do the other side. Um, but sometimes when you export it, it does it for you. But sometimes it creates the black spots. See, that's the black spots I'm talking about. They're not supposed to do that. But they do. So we have one here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the body disappear. Because I don't want it to be affected. Okay, now for this. This can be tricky. You can do this one or more ways. You can just select this, all of it. Um, you can do just the middle area here. Whatever you want to do it, you can do it. But do you know, if you do this side, it's going to also affect this side. So I'm just going to select this side. I'm just going to smooth. And see what it does if you select the bottom vertices? Alright, so those black spots. So undo. You want to catch your all your mistakes early. You know, you know, you can only do try to only do the affected area if you can. You can try to do every, you know, really close up and do just those vertices, but that can be time consuming because it does the same thing as long as you don't you know select the edges. It's look fine. It does sometimes go away with this scene, though. And that's fine. I'm not, you know, gonna nitpick that scene because it's gonna be those middle ones anyway, so it's gonna make the scene go away anyways. So, all right. And you're like, oh, okay. Now our mesh is done. You wish. You wish. All right. So what we have to do now is textures. What we are going to do is, we are going to go into materials. First, we're actually going to select our body. Now, I already have skin of a Sims 2 um, body already extracted. So, if you don't, you could do that in, see, in Body Shop, or you can. Um, just extract them through some PE. See so yeah, how that's all wonky looking? What we have to do, because it's not going to be perfect, obviously, because it's just not. You have to figure it out where it needs to go. <laughs> And the arms never have to worry about, because generally it's, it's right in the same area. You can fuss with them if you want, make them look perfect, but I mean, it's, it's just right here. Now, if your sim has tattoos, that, that would be something to worry about. Um, I find with, with Delilah from Alternate Universe, she has tattoos, and sometimes I notice that you could tell when someone just copies an arm, and moves them because she has one tattoo on one arm and then not the other arm. But sometimes when I look at some meshes, she has them on both arms. So that means they are just using the same side of the skin. I find that kind of funny sometimes. Alright. That is done. 
now we are going to do our Sims 4 hoodie. Sometimes I use the lightest one um, just to see if the black spots show up and through milk shape. Um, but really the real test for that is when you are in the game because in my shop it's going to highlight it. But in um, in the game it may not even show. I mean, I'm, unless you're in low resolution it will probably show. But I've noticed in like my game I'll have these black spots. Uh, my mesh I'm always so worried about it. But when I go in the game I can't tell at all. So... Um, that might just because I'm on high resolution, those in lower resolution, it might be a different story. Um, I don't test in re low resolution. Okay, why did we just take a picture? Well, that's just for our teaser when we put on um, in Tumblr. But, also we want to come in here and look at this. I'm going to take a picture of this. Another reason why we took a picture is that way we can see when we're, we're about to change this. You notice how this is a vertical rectangle. Well, you want to see The Sims 2. The Sims 2 does not look like that. The Sims 4 body does. I'm just going to... This is what a Sims 2 looks like. It is a square. Whereas the Sims 3, or Sims 3 and 4 really, are all rectangles because they put their whole body on one rectangle. Whereas um, Sims 2, this is just the body, and then you have a separate for your head and area. But Sims, Sims 4, it's all in one rectangle. So that is one way, reason why we have to do this. We have to adjust this. I'm just going to save it as the no blend. I'm not going to save this. I'm just actually going to go back in here. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to do a new again. And I'm going to select our square. And you know, see that? That's because it's now on a sense too. And what we have to do here is we have to stretch it to make it fit. <laughs> So now your textures are correct. What we're going to do now is we are going to export. And we are going to name it the same. Oh, no, actually, first what we need to do is name these groups. This is going to be no blend. And this is going to be top. Because this is a top. i got to remember. got to remember. Um what it is in Body Shop also. Okay, so no more right now. We can look at tutorials for that later. We're going to re-export this. We're going to re-copy this. So I want to make sure it's the right name when I go into SimPE. And that is what we're going to do right now. You remember that body shop file that we exported earlier at the very beginning of this tutorial? Well, we're going to go in there now. We're going to go to Tools, PGSE, Body Mesh Tool, Extracting Stage. And we're going to select it, AM Top. 
we are going to go to Object Tools, Fix Integrity. We are going to just paste Control V and Update. That way we don't have to type everything all over again. Why we have it again? Well, we're just going to Control V again and save it. We are now going to go to the Geometric Data Container. We're going to go over here to this one. We're going to right click and hit replace. We're going to go to our desktop where or wherever you saved. We're going to select it. And then we're going to resave. And then we're going to exit out. And then we're going to open. And we're going to go to our saved Sims folder where it is exported at um, when you do Body Shop. And we're going to select that AM top. And you see how it's different. Well, we're going to go to the three. 3D ID referencing file, and we're going to click it. And if you just now open SimPE, mine's been open for a couple of days, but if you just now open it, it's going to load things at the bottom here, and you'll see like a green bar, and it's going to go. Just let it do its thing, let it complete it, and then you're going to go to the PJSE body mesh tool, and we're going to go to linking stage. We're going to hit OK. We are going to select our mesh. We're going to open. We're going to click OK. We're going to hit that texture, and we're going to save, and we're going to close out. Now we have it linked. We have our mesh done. We are going to load Body Shop. And I'll be back with you when it is loaded, because it takes a bit. OK, Body Shop is loaded. We're going to go to Create Part, Start New Object, Create Clothing. We're going to make sure this is a male, because we are doing male. We're going to select our shirt that we had exported originally from the very beginning of this tutorial. Do you remember that far back? Sometimes it's hard to. Alright, so I can see here that we forgot to adjust the booty, but that's okay. We can do that later. I'm looking for any problems. Can't really tell right now because it's in the wrong texture. She's using the other shirt texture, so we're going to export that. We're going to call it the Henley. Just something easy to remember, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm going to just control V and I'm going to, let's see what color did we have first, maroon. I'm going to go to Photoshop. I'm going to go here, 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 here. Projects. Find the Henley folder. Alphabetical order. Should be able to do it. Henley. Alright, I'm going to select them two. I'm going to find our folder and I'm going to open our texture that we adjusted. I'm going to move it on to you and I'm going to move it on to you and then I'm not going to need you anymore. Alright, I'm going to adjust this to make it fit perfect. Now to do to make sure that it is perfect, you can control T, see that it all lines up. It is all square. I'm going to say yes, goodbye. And I am going to make this all black. This is your alpha file. And all the white part is obviously the shirt. And all the black part is not the shirt. And it won't show up. So, oops. Getting the right one. So what we have to do to create a perfect alpha, put it exactly where it needs to be. Delete the white. And what we have remaining, we're going to go to Adjustments, Hue and Saturation, Lightness all the way up, make sure Perfect Alpha, Control E, Control S to save, and Control W to exit out. Alright, so we have a texture, looks good. What I'm going to do, um, I'm going to adjust it, but first I'm going to put all the textures in and then I'm going to adjust it. That way I don't have to do it so many times, because I'm going to go in the game, right? So I might as well adjust it. Yeah, let's see. F6 to make the hands go up. F9 to make that go away. And I hit F3 to make where I could move it like that. Um, Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and import it. I don't remember if I imported it before, but might as well import it in again. Okay. Now, I'm, while I'm in Body Shop, because I'm not going to go back in Body Shop, I'm going to go into the game next. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do all the rest of the colors. I
successfully exit out of Body Shop. We can keep that up, that's fine. Going back into Milkshape. You're like, again? Again with the Milkshape? Yes, again with the Milkshape. Alright, File, Import. We're just making slight adjustments now. Nothing too um, complicated. Now I have that Bon Jovi song in my head. Some people go straight to Avril Lavigne, but I get Bon Jovi. I'm complicated. I get frustrated. Right or wrong, love or hate it. Yeah, it's now in my head. All right. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to make the top disappear, make the no blend disappear. We are going to delete all this. I don't need to look at it. And then now we're going to look. And now we can see that our butt is very round and very beautiful. And now we have to move. Okay. What I'm going to do is zoom in. You see how this goes out? We can just move all of that. So what I'm going to do is make the body hide. I'm going to select all of this. And see that fits a little bit better. Looks a little bit more natural. We don't have too much of a hang off here. And we have enough to cover our butt. Alright, so we're going to delete the bottom. Because we don't need it. And we're going to make this come back see our whole mesh. I'm going to go to File, Export, go back to our hoodie, just double click on that, say yes, and then I am going to, I'm going to go back into SimPE, I'm going to open our mesh, it's the only one that's actually named, I'm going to right click, I'm going to replace Go back to where we saved our hoodie, double click on that, say yes, say save. You don't have to relink it because it's already linked. Alright, while we're out of here, I'm going to show you how I rename files. I'm going to open the Sims 2 Pack Clean Installer. I'm going to go to my Save Sims. And see, it's all already here. I'm going to go to Rename. I'm going to double click on this, right click, copy, and to paste. And then if you want to check, let's see, where's my closest one? I can go to Save Sims, and they're all named except for, you know, the one that we don't need that file anymore. That was the file we exported and imported back so we could link to our mesh. I am going to load the game. I'm going to get back, back to you when it is loaded. All right, we are in the game. And Don is modeling for us, so what we're going to do here is all we're going to have him do is some animation to see how the mesh looks. See it's going through the pants a little bit. That's okay. And there's always going to be clipping because there's just always going to be. I see just one tweak and I'm going to show you how to do that in Milkshape but we won't go back into the game. Um, of course, you know, when I put this up for download, then you know, oh, it's it's done. Yay! Yeah, that's the only thing I see. Everything else looks good. Yeah, see, that's not that's supposed to stay up with the shoulder, and it's coming down. We're going to go back into here. And we are going to put on our draw versus bonus items. We'll look at these armpits. So this is upper arm and clavicle. So it is going with this. Whereas this over here is clavicle arm. Okay, what is up here? It's about the same. What about down here? I'm just looking to see. See, this is bicep arm. Alright. I think I want to change this to that. You see how it turned green?
All right. And that is bonus assignment. So that I mean I'm basically just going off of what is already assigned. And um going off of that, I mean, you can do all kinds of adjustments um with this and make the quantities higher and lower and find what you want the bone assignment to be you know what part of the skeleton you want it to be attached to um, I'm not an expert in this I I do review it every now and then look at rented spaces tutorial and try to figure out more things about it I do that often um, but I'm just not advanced like that now if your uh, mesh if it doesn't look like this, and it looks more like, um... What well, you need to do before you start meshing, because you really need to check this first. I forgot to show that you need to check this first. But when you, you, um... Before we start, like, cutting up the body so it fits... That sounds bad, cutting up the body. Um, to fit the sleeves and stuff like that, um... You want to turn this on to check to see if this is faded like this. It is all gradients together. If it is not, what you need to do is re-export it um, like we did with the TSRW object. And then go through the same motions like it was a new mesh. And just re-import it back in. Um, change the joint SQL to a different name and then export it as a Half-Life SDM and re-import it in just like we did before and that should fix it but this is how you mesh this is how you convert um, it is a long process I've been doing this for a while it's 433 um, what was the time step at the beginning of the video I don't even remember um, but you know that was in between loading body shop and also the game Basically, you could do you could do a conversion around two hours. Um, if you're more advanced than me, I'm sure you can do it a lot faster. If you know more shortcuts than I do, I'm sure you can do it faster. I do it my way. This is the way I know it. And but this is how you do it. And I hope that this has been informative and helpful to you. You can ask questions. I don't know how. I, if I don't know how to help you, then I don't know how to help you. If I can't help you, I will. Um, I am not in any way an expert of everything that is Milkshape, that everything that is Sim PE, that everything that is this game. Sims 2 still got us going in 2016, people, but um, I will do my best. But this has been a Sims 4 to Sims 2 clothing conversion tutorial by me, MDP, that's me, and... Hope to do another tutorial soon enough. Maybe we can do more stuff, show full body outfits, show pants. Um, I would like to do more of my posing tutorials and maybe probably need to do a talk about Sims 4 tutorial because you know, a lot of opinions out there about Sims 4 right now. I have some opinions. I'm not going to talk about them in this video. Um, maybe do another create a sim and show makeup, sh makeup showcases. Um... I hope to do more videos. I mean, I aim to do more. Just time is always a precedent with me. So, I will catch you in the next video.